So today, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to compare the role of the renewables, nuclear, natural gas, and I deliberately included uh, hydrogen and coal. Uh, we talked about it earlier in the former lecture as well. And to understand people's perceptions on energy policy. And lastly, we are going to talk about group, a, we are going to do a group presentations. So this is the figure that a changes in energy, global energy mix in 2018 and 2040, a based on the stated policy scenarios in International Energy Agency, IEA. What's the big difference of these two big figures? I think the increasing amount of a renewable energy, a share of the renewable energies, right? And this figure reflects the importance of the additional a, policies in place to a, get rid of fossil fuels. What's the big difference between climate policy and energy policy? As we talked about three big pillars of energy policy earlier, right? So what is the a, objective of climate policy? Sometimes people, people confused, right? Obviously, there's some overlapping with each other, right? I think um, climate policy is actually trying to, uh, policies and measures that try to reduce the greenhouse emission. Yes, bingo, yeah, bingo, yeah, and any other. Climate policy's aim is the nation's sustainable. Yes, it's true, but a first and foremost, a, the more important thing is to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions that increase the temperature of the earth, right? So get rid of the a carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That's the core objective of the climate policy. So what are the policy tools? So first, a carbon pricing, the cap and trade policies, right? And what are second, a important a policy instrument, direct regulations, right? So what are the third components of the climate, biggest a, uh, the, a climate policy, subsidy and support? So uh, this is the energy trilemma that we talked about earlier. So reliable, affordable, sustainable a energy provision is the objective, core objective of energy policy. And sometimes they, there are trade-off and conflicting with each other, these objectives. And this is the, a figure that shows you the idea of the hourly average breakdown of renewable energy resources in California in 2015. During the daytime, we, where we have a lot of sunlight, uh, produces significant amount of electricity. So this is the dot curve that I've also mentioned on the former lecture about the a electricity a generation. So what's the problem of this dot curve? Because they think they would rely on the solar and wind power plants, but the problem is they should have rely on the traditional a dirty fossil fuels to a supply electricity in a reliable manner, right? So that's the problem of the dirt curve. And this a dog, part of this a valley is going down and going down if we overproduce a electricity more and more in certain part of the region. So that which create the negative price of the electricity. So what are there, a what are the many a different ways to address this a dog valley a problem? It's on the slide. What's the secret? Hydrogen, right? The main idea is that use the excess electricity to produce green hydrogen to generate additional electricity. So that's the main a, idea of the green hydrogen. So what's the policy instrument, biggest uh, the contributor of the generating the green hydrogen tax credit, particularly, for example, in the United States, Inflation Reduction Act include huge part of the tax credit that contribute a, the hydrogen, green hydrogen more effectively. So what's the a usage of this green hydrogen? First, use the excess electric, uh, electricity to generate green hydrogen, and also that a hydrogen use, can be used to generate additional electricity, which means that that's purely clean, right? The other important part in green uh, hydrogen sector is that it can contribute to decarbonization in heavy industries. Many a policy instruments and support schemes are a in, take in place to support the production of the a blue and green hydrogen 
but there is no such thing as a green hydrogen in the world yet. So scholars argue that energy mix is important. We need to mix different, a com combine different a sources of electricity because uh, different sources of electricity has different, a, you know, advantages and disadvantages. So we need to mix it. So I just want to divide two groups. I think you already be prepared, right? The effects of radioactive waste can go for over 100 years. Environment with strict regulations regarding the disposal of nuclear waste. And that nuclear waste will be still existing. So how can you, we get over this kind of problem? Nuclear energy is a bridge to the final destination. But if the actions don't match up, then there's no reason for me to trust them. I think that is the, the big issue, political issues. The first 20 global risk has been listed. Uh, economy requires energy resources. It's one of the vital factors for economic growth in developing countries. Uh, this is the second part of debate session. Uh, is the clean for an oxymoron. Coal can be cleaner than it is now, but I don't think coal can be completely clean. They would rather look for alternative sources of energy and invest in that. It required at least uh, eight to two, two hundred fifty dollars per ton, which is so expensive. So what are you going to take from? What are you going to give them when you take this coal from them? With other renewable energy resources, a big problem for solar or for hydro, for example, is the consistency. So that at least we can use that to phase out the energy transition and then move to a cleaner version of that. Thank you for your comments. And let's conclude the debate. We'll do a group presentation. We've seen most of the people with no access to electricity are in the sub-Saharan Africa. They cannot afford nuclear power, they cannot afford natural gas. Study on nuclear power in BRICS. Of each nation where we will focus on five different, different explanatory variables. Why do you uh, choose BRICS as your topic? This is still at the initial stage, so in my group we discussed this is a very interesting pattern. These are estimated potentials, of course, but if you look at the bottom left graph, uh, there has been huge increases in terms of global installment. Is there any salinity effects to devices? Um, we believe in our initial round of research, the uh, parts floating on water are coated. And our topic is solar energy adoption in developing countries by analyzing cases. By researching Vietnam and Nigerian cases. So maybe with uh, developing the environmental structure, that will help with this corruption. And the other answer can be this yet. Uh, this class focuses more towards the global side of things, and so that's very interesting and useful for me because I do want to do uh, something with global policy uh, and environment at the same time. One of the most unique styles, not necessarily about this class, but because of Professor Kim, is that he offers a lot of opportunities to engage with him in discussion, as well as debate with one another as well. And I find that to be very, very uh, useful and helping me understand not just what he wants to teach, but what the other students also have in their own mindsets as well. Um, I find that to be you know, pretty interesting. I am coming from a developing country and I also work for an energy company in my country. These and many reasons are why I am interested in the Global Energy Policy class. My experience has been amazing with the professor. The Global Energy class introduces you to a lot of political issues surrounding energy transition and all other policy issues that will ensure that we have a sustainable energy in the 2030-2050 energy targets. Yes, my background, my undergraduate is in environmental science. So that's my profession. I'm in, interested in environmental issues, anything to do with environmental management, environmental policy. So that's why I chose this course, Global Energy Policy, so that I can get a, a bigger understanding of uh, global energy issues. This class has given me the opportunity to be able to learn how policies are developed in other nations and also how things are dealt with in trying to combat uh, climate change and reducing carbon emissions globally. I think uh, Professor Kim is a very good professor. He's accommodating, he accommodates our views and he's open to questions. If you've got any issues, you need some help, he's always ready to assist and willing to help. Uh, let's wrap it up. I know it's a bit early for today, but uh, I said earlier, three hours are the longest hours. So.